This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers. The birthing process of a human being is easy to understand. It's called gestation. It's a time when a small zygote is generated from impregnating two gametes that cause meiosis. This results in the haploid state that establishes the DNA of the baby. Then, over a period of nine months, this small zygote grows into a full-size 6 to 15 pound baby, which ultimately is born of a woman. There is no confusion about the definition of what birthing means when considering the biology of human gestation. But somehow, when it comes to understanding the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus about being born again, surprisingly, all kinds of different interpretations and confusion occur about what Jesus meant by his explanation. Yet, strangely enough, Nicodemus knew, yes, he knew Jesus was actually talking about metabolic change. Otherwise, why would he have asked how could he fit back into his mother's womb? Now, admittedly, this is indeed a very odd response especially if he understood Jesus to simply mean a spiritual awakening. So what did Jesus really mean? Well, stay with us as we explore this discussion and explain chapter 3 of the Gospel of John. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our family to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Bill Watson. Well, hello there, and again, welcome to another international telecast of the Armor of God. Good to be with all of you once again. You know, if you're like me in my travels and so forth, I've come across certain Christian folk who have asked me if I've been saved. Do I know the Lord? Uh, have, I, have I allowed Jesus into my heart? Am I born again? I, I'm sure some of you have probably heard uh, a person maybe once or twice even come up to you on a street corner or in a supermarket or someplace in your travels where they've asked you these questions. And they're all animated, they're happy, they're excited about the relationship that, that, they, that they have with Jesus Christ. And all in all, I mean, you got to admire them to a certain extent because it's, it's hard to understand when you're not like in that level, uh, their enthusiasm and the level of uh, excitement that they seem to express. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of a story years ago, back way back uh, now, longer than I'd like to admit, I was searching for God, the truths of the Bible and all, and I answered an ad that was advertising a Bible study in a house, at a house. So I, I went and searched out, found where the house was, kind of in a, a lower middle class neighborhood, I'll just leave it at that, uh, in, the, in the city I lived at, and I knocked on the door. The door opened. There's a guy there and he let me in. I mentioned that I was there for the Bible study. He smiled and very, very warm and invited me in the house and uh, told me to go ahead and make myself comfortable in the living room. And so I sat there and he and I talked a little bit. And as we were talking, a, a lady friend of his, she came moseying on into the living room where we were at. And she sat down, made herself comfortable, introduced herself to me. And we just started, you know, talking a little bit and getting to acquainted with one another. And uh, I I started thinking about the fact that, you know what, I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the room is filled, it's got chairs and all, but I'm the only one here and I'm starting to get a little bit apprehensive, if you know what I'm saying. I'm getting a little bit anxious about the environment that I'm finding myself in, not really realizing just exactly what to expect because there I am talking to two strangers that apparently are living in the house or at least have access to the house and they certainly were comfortable and they offered me a bottle of water. Now we were all three of us just talking and uh, the guy then, in, uh, excuse himself and said, I'll be right back. And he left and then he came back and we talked a little bit more. And then the next thing I know, 
this loud running down the steps, a roaring entrance of a guy with a big beaming smile on his face, all excited, comes running over to me, and he says, hi, and he introduced himself to me. He bends over, I'm sitting on a chair, he's standing up, he bends over, puts his hand out and says, I'm so-and-so, and your name is, sir. And I told him my name, he says, oh man, I'm so glad you're here. We're gonna study about the Lord tonight, and we're gonna hopefully have a, a great study and understand what Jesus is all about, and it's just so exciting that you're here, and we hope that you're going to find a relationship with Jesus Christ and get saved tonight, you know. And he was excited. I mean, his enthusiasm was just overpowering in some cases. And I, I, I understand because he was wanting to get me to be where he's at because he really believed, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, that Jesus was the answer to all of the problems that he presumed I had because I was there and I answered the ad and consequently illustrated by virtue of me being there that I had some interest in Jesus. My friends, I want to talk a little bit about this. This thing about are you saved, born again, is that really what born again is all about? And does it really play into this being saved? I want to explore this concept that so many Christians today, especially in the evangelical world, hold uh, very dear to their hearts. But before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to, as we traditionally do here on the Armor of God, interrupt myself to offer you a couple of free offers. And let me emphasize that. These are free offers of which you can download right off of our website uh, at cgi.org. That's right, at cgi.org. You can uh, find them there uh, and download them uh, very quickly. They're titled the first one, Born from Above or Born Born again. Uh, what is the promise of the saved is the second one. And both of these, as I say, are free for the asking. All you've got to do is download them, and that's the way we would prefer it, frankly, because it's a lot faster for you and a lot more economical, cost-effective for us. Otherwise, you can certainly dial the 888 number there, 578-8791 and request them the old-fashioned way, and we'll mail them out to you for sure without a, without a doubt. But go ahead and ask for Born From Above or Born Again. That's the first one, a small booklet, again, easily read in one sitting. And the second one, What is the Promise of the Saved? And you can go ahead and, uh, as I say, get both of these. And let me emphasize, these are free. Also, I want to mention that we've got some webcasting in real-time presentations, Bible studies. Some of them are pre-recorded as well, but nevertheless, are presentations that you can hopefully be edified by and enhance your walk with Jesus Christ and your relationship with God the Father and be able to uh, uh, enjoy, in some cases, real-time uh, exposure to a Bible study where you can even interact. These are all listed on our website, the times and the days for the schedule. All you've got to do is go to our website, go on the top there where you see webcast, hit on it, and then you can see our schedule and where the next event uh, will be uh, expected to be transmitted. Also, I want to mention our app. Yes, this app is really cool, my friends. It will allow you to navigate through our website so easily. You can get it at any of the app stores. And again, this is a free download. This app will provide you access at your fingertips wherever you are. It'll give you mobility so that maybe if you've got time at an airport, you're waiting for an airplane or you're at the doctor's office, maybe waiting to see your doctor. And you could, rather than reading a magazine, you could be actually with headphones listening to a sermon or just reading one of our booklets right there off your telephone or your iPad iPad through our app. Again, you can get these apps at any of the app stores that you're familiar with, and once more, it too is free for the download. It's a free download. So once more now, let me remind you our free offers for this program, Born From Above or Born Again. And the second one is, what is the promise of the saved? And uh, both of these, again, let me remind you, are indeed uh, free. Now, back to the program, and we're talking about this idea, this, this concept of being born again, and what it means to really be born again. And I know there's a lot of people that feel that, well, coming to know the Lord is being born again. And you know what? I get that. I understand exactly what you mean in terms of that 
terminology and how the differentiation and the distinction of, well, how you were and now that you know Jesus and you've repented of your sins and you accept Him as your personal Savior, how that can be construed as a rebirthing, you know, because you're now resetting yourself. It's a reset in your life that affords you a whole new outlook. You're going to prioritize things in your life that are going to be different, and as a result, it's going to be a rebirthing of your motivations and of your priorities and all the things that you know you, you live for and live by, and rightly so, because that's what Christianity is all about. It's coming to grips with the fact that you're a sinner, understanding that those sins need to be repented of remorsefully, and recognizing the fact that only Jesus Christ has the power to, number one, forgive you and then present you with and gift you with eternal life. And that is certainly understandable, plausible, and frankly acceptable because everybody, as I've often said, has to have their come to Jesus moment in order to get started in this walk we call the Christian lifestyle. But most of those who will uh, advocate and advance this idea of born again We'll turn your attention to John, the Gospel of John in chapter 3. The Gospel of John of chapter 3. I'd like to bring your attention over there to it because this is where we're going to spend the most of our time, the remaining time we have here on the program here in John chapter 3. Because the question I have for all of us, is John 3 about the idea, the general, the traditional idea of what many evangelical Christians believe today to be the definition of born again? Or does it present something far more richer, far more deeper, that it's a dimension that most people don't recognize, they don't see, they, they can't appreciate it for what it really is because it's a tremendous, tremendous story between Jesus and a Pharisee named Nicodemus. So I want to take some time, take our time through this with the remaining portion of what we have here to get acquainted with the personality of Jesus and how he interacts with this Pharisee, this teacher of teachers, because this guy was no knucklehead, as uh, it could be said. This guy was a very intelligent man, well-read and well-suited and understanding the Old Testament scriptures because, frankly, that was the only Bible that there was at this time when Jesus met with Nicodemus. Remember, there was no New Testament at this time. The only scriptures and, frankly, the Bible of the early New Testament church, the Christian church, was the Old Testament. That's right, my friends, the Old Testament. So let's get that fixed in our minds because there was no New Testament at this time. So here we have now, we have this guy Nicodemus. And he is a teacher of teachers, and he comes by night. We've often said, you know, Nick by night. Uh, remember that little gig that used to be on television? But uh, in this case, it was far more important with what they were about to talk about than some of those skits that we saw in Nick, uh, Nick by night. Verse 1 here we read, chapter 3, Gospel of John. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. So I'm telling you, this, this guy was a leader. Uh, the, uh, the, the same came to Jesus by night. And he said unto him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher come from God. Now that's a major statement. It's, it's a thumbnail. It's a one-liner. But it gives you the indication that this was a friendly conversation. So we're setting up the discussion in a non-adversarial way. Nicodemus is not there to fight with, debate with, or to conflict with Jesus. He's actually there laying down his sword, all that he believes, all that he uh, may hold dear to his heart, and he's sincerely looking for understanding and enlightenment from Jesus and pays him some very deep respect here. Calls him rabbi, teacher, and he claims and gives an admission that he believes he's from God. So this is major. On Nicodemus's part, being a Pharisee and coming from that side of the coin, uh, to come before Jesus, who was considered a rogue rabbi, by the way, and was viewed uh, in many respects uh, as a uh, usurper, uh, you know, somebody that was just not an interloper, that was not really certified and, and credible and should be really avoided, quite frankly. But at any rate, Nicodemus risks his reputation, and that's why he snuck by night. He didn't want to be known or seen with Jesus due to Jesus' reputation. 
And he says why he believes he came from God here in verse 2. We're still in verse 2. Halfway down, we read this. For no man can do the miracles that you do except God's, God be with him. So again, Nicodemus reiterates his belief and confirmation that Jesus, as far as he's concerned, is indeed a man of God. There's no question in Nicodemus' mind. Now, we don't really get the, uh, the backdrop on what generated Jesus to say verse 3, but we do know the conversation goes down that route. And so we pick up the conversation in motion, basically, in verse 3, and Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, and there is no real, I mean, Nicodemus didn't ask a question, and that's why I say this was an in ongoing conversation, because this is a response Jesus had to apparently something that Nicodemus said that we don't have record of. But anyway, we get the gist of the direction of where the conversation is going to go by the way Jesus answers uh, the state in this statement. And he says this, Truly, truly, I say, that's the word verily, verily means truly, truly. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, look, give me your attention here on this. I, I want you to understand this really clearly. I want you to get this, Nicodemus. So he says, truly, truly, Nicodemus, he says, I say unto you, except a man be born again. And in this case, what he's saying, the Greek word here, gneo, is to be essentially uh, brought, to, uh, brought to a... Uh, gestation, brought through a gestation process. And he, Jesus is referencing the fact that he needs to go through it again, meaning he's recognizing Nicodemus as being born, of course, because he's standing in front of him. He's a grown man. He's an educated man. He's a Pharisee by trade. So Jesus is recognizing the fact he's a born man, but he's telling him he's got to go through this gestation period again. And the word uh, again is used there as we see. And he goes on here in verse 2, we continue, in verse 3, I'm sorry. He says, you cannot, uh, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now that's a major statement, because you have to understand something. Nicodemus is coming from a framework, an outlook, a worldview that is colored by the Old Testament. The Old Testament being the law, the writings, and the prophets. So Nicodemus has a certain concept about what Jesus is telling him, a frame of mind that he's comprehending what Jesus is telling him through his ears and mind and coming to a understanding, a recognition. And he proceeds here in verse 4 to respond to Jesus' statement that Nicodemus, you got to be gestated again. That's right you got to go through this gestation period as you did physically. you got to go through it again. Now, Nicodemus is really confused, and you can tell he's confused a little bit by virtue of his statement. Notice verse 4, how he responds. He says, Nicodemus does, unto him, Jesus, how can a man be born when he's old? I mean, logically, I mean, Nicodemus is telling us something here. He's taking Jesus biologically literal. The word that Jesus uses is a molecular, biological word that implies that Jesus is talking about mo molecular manifestations or material. He's talking biologically. That's right. He's talking biologically. Uh, and he says, Nicodemus does, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born. Okay, so there you go. We absolutely, undoubtedly have to accept the fact uh, Nicodemus is comprehending Christ in a very literal sense, a molecular sense, in a material sense, in a biological sense. And so he's responding accordingly. It's like if you were in biology class talking to your biology teacher and you're asking him, how does, uh, how does this tadpole turn into a frog? How does the molecular makeup of the flesh of a tadpole turn into a frog or this larva? How, how does this larva turn into a butterfly, teacher? And Nicodemus is confused. He's saying, wait a minute. I'm six foot or I'm five nine or I'm five five. You know, maybe he was a little Jewish guy. But the point of it is Nicodemus is saying, how can I enter into my mother's womb again, Jesus? Because I hear what you're saying, but I don't comprehend the logic 
because if I hear what you're saying, I'm, I'm pulling a blank here. You're, you're talking over my head. So he asks these two questions. He says here again, verse 4, I want you to get this clearly, my friends, because again, let me remind you the question. Is John 3 talking about the traditional definition of born again? And the answer to that question, my friends, is I'm telling you, no, it goes beyond that. It goes much deeper than that. It goes much richer than that. Jesus is actually taking Nicodemus behind the curtain and to show him new truth that Nicodemus could never have gotten from the Old Testament. Oh, there were implications. Yes, there were innuendos. But Jesus is going to add an element of clarity here to Nicodemus that is just going to stun the daylights out of Nicodemus. Watch this. Watch how this unfolds. Verse 5, Jesus answers him again and says once more, Truly, truly, give me your attention on this, Nicodemus. Listen to this. And remember, this was non-confrontational. This was a friendly conversation. It was teacher and student in relationship because Jesus, the teacher, the rabbi, and Nicodemus, in this case the student, was really there to learn. He really wanted to know what Jesus thought about life after death, and that's why he was there. And so Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, except a man, and he reiterates, is born again, born of water, I'm sorry, born of water and of spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So Jesus now takes it another step further. He says, unless a man is born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, a lot of people, scholars, have said, well, the born of water is indicative of the fact of a human birth. Okay, I get that because the first thing that happens when a human being is born is what? The, the females, the mother's water breaks and the baby is born of water. We all know that. That's biological. That's just the human realm that we're all aware of. By the same token, we understand according to Acts chapter 2, that we must be born of water through baptism as well. So it could also be indicative of, as what Jesus was implying here, that unless you repent and get baptized and become spiritually oriented, uh, you, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. But there's a distinction here, and to stay on point, the first offer or the first option that I mentioned here seems to be more in line with the context because we're talking in terms of biology and Jesus is very clear over the fact that look a man must be born of water yes first in order to qualify because we're talking about human beings we're not talking about dogs and cats monkeys you know or rhinoceroses he says here verse 6 that which is born of the flesh now he goes back to this so and that's why I kind of favor I mean you know I'm not gonna make a doctor of it, but I, that's why I kind of favor the fact of born of water implies the birthing of a human being, and then that same birthing of that human being has to be born again of spirit, and that was all new. Nicodemus, when Jesus said, you must be born of this, uh, you know, spirit, well, Nicodemus is trying to comprehend the fact of, well, what does that mean by comparing it to flesh? And Jesus clarifies here when in verse 6 he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. This is two distinctions, my friends. Without a doubt, we're talking two different types of material. And he says Jesus, as though he anticipated Nicodemus's, what you could say, deer in the headlights look, Jesus says, Nicodemus, marvel not. Don't be surprised at this. Don't be stunned at what I'm telling you. And then he moves on, Jesus does. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. You got to go through that gestation period again. Don't be confused by that, Nicodemus. The wind blows where it lists. Meaning, remember, I told you what is born of flesh is flesh. What's born of spirit is spirit. He says, and you hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. In other words, Jesus was saying to Nicodemus, if you're born of Spirit, Nicodemus, you're going to be invisible to the human eye. People will be able to see perhaps some effect you might have being invisible, but you will be invisible. And Nicodemus, look at his response. you got to love this, my friends. Look at this, verse 9. 
Nicodemus answered him and said unto him, how can these things be? You can just, you can just see the incredul incredulousness of Nicodemus oozing out of him. I mean, he can say, how can these things be? What are you telling me, Jesus? How is it that you're telling me that if I'm going to be born again, I've got to literally be born of some material that you're claiming is like the wind? This is unbelievable. Nicodemus is incredulous over the information of this. And remember, he is a well-schooled Pharisee in the scriptures of the writings of the law and the prophets. And Nicodemus is finding this exciting. Jesus answers him in the, in the excitement of it all in verse 10. And he says, are you a master of Israel? And don't you know these things? He kind of chides him a little bit. Verse 11, he says, truly, truly, Nicodemus, listen to me. I'm saying unto you that we speak, that we know and testify that we have seen. And yet you don't believe our witness. In other words, you know, I, I'm talking to you here. Believe what I'm telling you understand, comprehend, I'm telling you some new truth here. And this is exciting. He says here, if I told you earthly things, verse 12, John 3, and you believe not, how shall uh, you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And Nicodemus is just, I'm sure he's stunned. I mean, he's got, as I said already, the proverbial deer in the headlight look at what he's hearing. And if that wasn't enough, Jesus capstones it with the next statement. Notice this, John 3, verse 13. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. What Jesus just did was he told Nicodemus, Moses is not in heaven, Nicodemus. King David, a man after God's own heart, is not in heaven, Nicodemus. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all the prophets, Noah, Enoch, none of them are in heaven. No man has ascended to heaven. That's what Nicodemus heard, my friends. And his mind is rolling around with this idea, spirit is born of spirit and flesh is flesh, and you've got to be born again. My friends, I'm submitting to you John 3 through 13, 1 through 13 is all about a manifested molecular change from flesh and blood to spirit, like larva to a butterfly, a tadpole to a frog. It's all around us. God is going to give us a birthing into the spirit world with a whole new body. Time's run out on me. Get those offers that I mentioned to you earlier. One uh, titled Born From Above or Born Again. And the second one, What is the Promise of the Saved? Both are designed to give you a deeper understanding Understanding of what I just scratched the surface on, my friends. Go ahead, dial that number now, 888-578-8791, or just download it right off of our website, www.cgi.org. My friends, this is Bill Watson reminding you always, as we often do, you stay strong in these evil days so that you can put on the armor of God. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas, 75701, or call toll-free at 1-888-578-8791, or call 1-903-939-2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org, or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.